US, Japan, Australia and the Philippines to stage military drills in disputed South China Sea. The United States, Japan, Australia, and the Philippines are set to conduct their inaugural joint naval exercises in the South China Sea, showcasing a unified front amid rising tensions caused by Beijing's assertive territorial actions. The exercises, which include anti-submarine warfare training, aim to reinforce the rule of law in the Indo-Pacific region and uphold freedom of navigation. While China wasn't explicitly mentioned, the statement reaffirmed support for a 2016 international arbitration ruling invalidating China's expansive territorial claims. China has consistently rejected the ruling, prompting concerns from neighboring nations. The exercises, dubbed Maritime Cooperative Activity, will involve the deployment of Japan's JS Akabano destroyer and emphasized the importance of regional peace and stability. The participating countries underscored their commitment to respecting national sovereignty and international law. The Philippines views the drills as part of efforts to enhance its defense capabilities. Notably, the South China Sea disputes involve several other nations, including Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan, but tensions between China and the Philippines have intensified recently. The U.S. has reiterated its commitment to defend the Philippines under their treaty alliance. Raising concerns about potential conflict escalation. Meanwhile, Japan has its own territorial disputes with China in the East China Sea, adding to regional tensions. The recent clashes between Chinese and Filipino forces near 2nd Thomas Shoal have further strained relations, with both sides accusing each other of intrusions and asserting their sovereignty. As geopolitical tensions simmer, discussions on maritime security and territorial disputes are expected to feature prominently in an upcoming summit between the U.S., Japan, and the Philippines. Philippines, China Trade Accusations Over South China Sea Encounter The Philippines and China are embroiled in a dispute over an incident in the South China Sea, where Manila alleges that two Chinese Coast Guard vessels harassed Filipino fishing boats within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. China refutes these claims, asserting that its vessels acted appropriately to counter illegal activities. Tensions have escalated between the two nations, both of which lay overlapping territorial claims in the region, amidst China's expansive assertions of sovereignty in the South China Sea. The Philippines will participate in joint maritime exercises with the United States, Japan, and Australia, aimed at promoting a free and open Indo-Pacific in response to China's increasing assertiveness. This confrontation underscores broader geopolitical tensions in the region, particularly concerning maritime security and territorial disputes. Japanese leader visits new chip factory, stressing ties with Taiwan and support for key technology. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida visited a new semiconductor plant in Kyushu, Japan, which received significant government support to ensure a stable chip supply. The plant, owned by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, is Japan's first venture with the Taiwanese giant. Kishida emphasized the plant's importance for Japan's semiconductor industry, electric vehicles, and electronics. Japanese firms like Sony and Toyota are investing in the TSMC subsidiary operating the plant, reflecting Japan's efforts to regain its chip market presence. The government allocated funds to revitalize the domestic chip industry after pandemic-related shortages. The plant is expected to create high-tech jobs and attract substantial private sector investment. Kishida's visit aims to boost ties with Taiwan and the U.S. amid a decline in his popularity due to a party scandal. The semiconductor industry has become a geopolitical battleground, with TSMC expanding globally and Japan supporting various semiconductor projects. Russian missile strikes on the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv kill 6 and wound 11. Russian forces conducted drone and missile attacks overnight in Ukraine's second-largest city, Kharkiv, resulting in casualties and extensive damage to residential areas and infrastructure. Ukrainian air defense forces successfully intercepted a significant number of drones and missiles. Meanwhile, on the ground, Russian forces continued their offensive operations, particularly in the Bakhmut area of the eastern Donetsk region. Despite facing difficulties, Ukrainian forces maintained control over certain strategic locations. Intense battles also occurred near the city of Avdiivka, held by Russian forces, with ongoing tension along various parts of the front line. The Russian military claimed that Ukraine fired rockets into Russian territory, which were intercepted. However, Russia has not officially commented on the attacks in Ukraine.
A Soyuz capsule carrying three crew from the International Space Station lands safely in Kazakhstan. A Russian Soyuz space capsule safely landed in Kazakhstan, bringing back two women and one man who had completed their missions aboard the International Space Station ISS. The crew included Russia's Oleg Novitsky, NASA's Laurel O'Hara, and Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus. Meanwhile, those remaining on the ISS include astronauts from both NASA and Russia. O'Hara had spent a total of 204 days aboard the islands, while Novitsky and Vasilevskaya's journey to space was delayed by two days due to technical issues during the initial launch attempt. Despite tensions between Russia and the West, the ISS continues to operate as a symbol of international cooperation, with plans to extend its operation until at least 2030. Iran tells U.S. to step aside as it readies response to Israel. Iran has asked the United States to step aside as it prepares a response to a suspected Israeli attack on its consulate in Syria. Hezbollah, Iran's main proxy in the Middle East, has warned Israel of readiness for war. Iran conveyed a message to the U.S. warning against involvement in Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's actions, while the U.S. urged Iran not to target American interests. Both countries are reportedly on high alert, anticipating significant responses from Iran against Israeli or American targets in the region. The airstrike, targeting the Iranian consulate in Damascus, resulted in casualties, including Iranian generals. Marking the first attack on an Iranian diplomatic building by Israel. Tensions between Israel and Iran have escalated since Israel's conflict with Hamas, another Iran-backed group, in October. Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, confirmed Iran's imminent response, emphasizing the readiness of his group for any potential conflict with Israel. Israeli troops recover slain Gaza hostage, Egypt to host new truce talks. Israel announced the recovery of the body of a hostage killed while being held captive in Gaza, with Hamas, the dominant Islamist movement in the Palestinian enclave, agreeing to participate in new ceasefire talks in Cairo. The recovered body belonged to Elad Katzer, an Israeli farmer held by Palestinian Islamic Jihad captors, who was killed and buried in Gaza in mid-January. Efforts by Qatari and Egyptian mediators aim to secure a deal to return some of the remaining hostages in Gaza as part of a ceasefire agreement. Despite the ongoing conflict, the daily death toll in Gaza has decreased, with Hamas claiming to have targeted Israeli tanks in Khan Yunis. In response to U.S. President Joe Biden's call for an immediate ceasefire and increased humanitarian relief measures, Israel approved the reopening of the Erez crossing into Gaza and the temporary use of Ashdod port. Hamas announced its delegation's participation in Cairo for ceasefire talks, while Israel remains undecided, expressing concerns about the effectiveness of the discussions. Protests in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem demanded the Israeli government secure the release of hostages. The situation remains tense, with both sides expressing their objectives for any potential truce. UN chief demands change of Israeli strategy after eight worker deaths. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for a significant shift in strategy by the Israeli military following an attack that resulted in the deaths of seven international humanitarian aid workers in the Gaza Strip. While Israel has acknowledged responsibility for the incident and announced disciplinary measures, Guterres emphasized that the fundamental issue lies in the military strategy and procedures that permit such mistakes to occur repeatedly. He urged independent investigations and meaningful changes on the ground to address these failures. Guterres highlighted the devastating toll on humanitarian aid workers during the nearly six-month-long Gaza war. With nearly 200 aid workers, including 175 UN staff members, killed. He described the conflict in Gaza as one of the deadliest, affecting civilians, aid workers, journalists, health workers, and UN personnel. With the war approaching its six-month mark, Guterres stressed the urgent need for action to alleviate the humanitarian crisis and protect those providing assistance in the region. UN Rights Council demands halt of arms sales to Israel. The UN Human Rights Council passed a resolution demanding a halt in all arms sales to Israel in response to the Gaza war, which has resulted in a significant death toll. The resolution, supported by 28 member states, highlighted concerns of genocide in Gaza and called for an immediate ceasefire and humanitarian access. Israel's ambassador to the UN denounced the resolution, while Palestinian and South African ambassadors urged action to stop the violence. The United States and other allies of Israel voted against the resolution, citing concerns over its wording and failure to condemn Hamas.
This resolution follows a similar one passed by the UN Security Council calling for a ceasefire. The Gaza war began after an attack by Hamas on October 7, resulting in casualties and hostages on both sides. The resolution focused on Israel's actions, calling for an end to its occupation and blockade of Palestinian territories and condemning statements amounting to incitement to genocide. Additionally, two other resolutions targeting Israel's settlements and occupation of the Syrian Golan Heights were passed by the Human Rights Council. U.S. concern over South Africa's growing ties with Russia, Iran and Hamas, fallen for propaganda. The relationship between the United States and South Africa has become strained due to South Africa's perceived alignment with Russia and China, prompting U.S. concerns about bilateral cooperation. South Africa's support for the Palestinian cause and its involvement in the Israel-Hamas conflict have further exacerbated tensions. Critics argue that South Africa has fallen for Russian propaganda, leading to a shift in its foreign policy alignment. The U.S. has expressed concerns about Russia's influence in Africa and urged African countries to be cautious about engaging with China. Economic challenges in South Africa Including high unemployment rates and weak growth, add to the complexities of the situation. South Africa's support for Russia, China, and Iran, as well as its abstention from condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine, have contributed to the strained relationship with the U.S. Israel fires two officers after finding grave errors in strike on aid workers. An Israeli military inquiry into the killing of seven aid workers in Gaza found serious errors and breaches of procedure. The inquiry revealed that Israeli forces mistakenly targeted the aid workers' vehicles, believing they were Hamas gunmen. As a result, two officers were dismissed, and senior commanders were reprimanded. The incident sparked global outrage and prompted a response from U.S. President Joe Biden, who threatened a shift in U.S. policy towards Israel unless civilian harm in Gaza was reduced. World Central Kitchen, the aid group to which the workers belonged, called for an independent investigation into the incident. The Israeli military pledged to address the failures identified in the inquiry and take steps to prevent similar incidents in the future. Biden not backing demands for independent probe into World Central Kitchen strike. Following the Israeli strike that killed seven aid workers with the World Central Kitchen, the Biden administration is reviewing an Israeli investigation into the incident and has not yet backed calls for an independent, third-party investigation. While Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu described the strike as a mistake, some Democratic lawmakers, including Senator Tim Kaine, have called for further consequences and an independent investigation. However, the administration is reserving judgment on whether another investigation is necessary. The incident has sparked debate over the need for accountability and the balance between Israel's right to self-defense and the protection of civilians in Gaza. Exclusive, concern over Biden's stance on Israel-Hamas war rattles high-profile campaign donors. Prominent donors to President Joe Biden's re-election campaign are withholding their financial support in protest of the Biden administration's handling of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, particularly its response to the war in Gaza. Some former donors, including those who served on Biden's finance committee, have criticized the administration for providing military aid to Israel while condemning civilian casualties in Gaza. They argue that the administration's approach contradicts its stated commitment to human rights and undermines efforts to achieve peace in the region. Despite these concerns, the Biden campaign continues to raise significant amounts of money, with a recent fundraiser in New York City bringing in $26 million. However, the reluctance of some donors reflects a broader trend within the Democratic Party, where criticism of Israel's actions in Gaza is growing, particularly among grassroots activists. While these donors may still support Democratic candidates, their hesitation underscores the challenges the Biden campaign faces in maintaining unity within the party ahead of the 2024 election. Texas Gov Abbott travels to Sanctuary City to say he won't stop busing in illegal immigrants. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, speaking at the New York Republican Party's annual gala, criticized New York City Mayor Eric Adams and the Biden administration for their handling of the influx of illegal immigrants into the U.S. He announced that Texas will continue busing illegal immigrants to sanctuary cities until a new president is elected. Abbott explained that he initiated this policy after local officials in Texas expressed concerns about the federal government dropping off migrants in their communities. Initially planning to bus migrants to Washington, D.C., Abbott redirected them to New York City after Adams criticized him. He stated that Texas will continue this practice until there is a change in leadership in the White House.
Abbott blamed President Biden's policies for creating chaos and endangering Texas, praising former President Trump's efforts to reduce illegal immigration. He accused Biden of either lying or being uninformed about his authority to address illegal immigration without Congress's intervention. Several prominent Republicans, including House GOP Chair Rep. Elise Stefanik and Republican National Committee Chair Michael Watley, attended the event and echoed Abbott's criticisms of the Biden administration. In response, Mayor Adams offered Abbott a complimentary stay at a migrant shelter in New York City to witness how migrants are treated with dignity and respect. Abbott dismissed this offer as a gimmick, and New York City estimated it will spend over $10.6 billion on migrants by summer 2025. Chicago Mayor Urges Biden to Grant Work Permits to Half Million Illegal Immigrants Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson called on President Biden to grant work permits to approximately 500,000 undocumented immigrants living in Illinois, while also suggesting that Chicago could accommodate another 400,000 to 700,000 undocumented migrants. During a roundtable with urban business leaders, Mayor Johnson emphasized the need for economic opportunities for undocumented immigrants to build better lives in Chicago or wherever they choose to reside. He asserted that Chicago will always welcome those who wish to call the city home, emphasizing his commitment to immigrant communities despite the ongoing humanitarian crisis. Johnson, along with dozens of other city mayors, including those from Denver, New York, Seattle, and San Francisco, penned a letter to the Biden administration urging for additional work permits for undocumented immigrants. The mayor highlighted the overwhelming impact of the migrant crisis on cities like Chicago and emphasized the importance of extending and granting more work permits to alleviate the situation. The federal government recently announced an extension of work permits from 180 to 540 days for certain categories of undocumented migrants to prevent lapses in employment authorization. However, it remains unclear how many undocumented migrants in Chicago will be eligible for these extensions. Despite his advocacy for undocumented immigrants, Mayor Johnson has faced criticism from some Chicago residents frustrated by the influx of migrants into their neighborhoods. Since August 2022, over 20,000 migrants have arrived in Chicago, with thousands still in shelters.